It says we're live. Hey everyone, welcome to, what do I call this? I guess this is like the new Niche to Profit show. Um, for those that don't know me, I am Danny Ackerman, also known as the Danny App, also known as the Niche Lady. Uh, I did used to have a show on the Vegas Video Network and there's actually a playlist down in my channel if you ever want to go back and watch some of those shows where I brought on guests and stuff. But this is my home version of that show with, we've changed it up quite a bit. Uh, because what I like to do is try to not just teach you stuff, but give you the confidence and the tools to go out there and make a ton of money and have it be fun. Uh, Cause for me, oh my gosh, you guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish you could see what I am seeing right now. I'll get back to my thought. But I have this really, really naughty little chihuahua who's supposed to be laying at my feet. And I thought he was, but he crept away as I started talking. And I have a couch right over here to the side. And I looked over and he was standing and just looking up over the couch at me like, Neener, neener, because he knows I won't yell at him right now, apparently. <laughs> it, was so, it was hysterical. Okay, darn it. I, I wish I would have been ready to flip the camera. Anyways, <laughs> um, I, what I was saying was I would not be in this business and stay in this business if there was not an element of fun and enjoyment to it. Sure, there's the grind, there's the parts we don't like, there's, you know, the shipping and the dealing with the bookkeeping and, well, those are my two things. Even though I make those shipping videos and make it look like I'm having fun, I, I really, I'm so tired of shipping, but it's okay because I found a new way to make it fun by making the videos. But there are those pieces that are just not going to be fun and if you have the pieces that are fun and it kind of gives you the incentive to like, keep moving forward, it makes it all worthwhile. So that's in kind of a long spelled out way what this is all about, what my channel is all about. Because the areas I find that everybody has, well not every, I hate using everybody's and everyone's and all, you know, I try not to do that. A large portion of eBay sellers are those even thinking about selling on eBay, but um, not quite there yet. It's the research and the knowing how to price things and what to call it and the shipping and all that stuff that causes you to have some anxiety and hold back from just going full force into your business. So I hope I can help with that. Um, hello, hello, everyone. I see my mom made it. Mom is in the house. Uh, Anne Marie, Cindy, Donna, Tiger Purple. Um, Carla, Martha, Jenny, hey, good to see you. And for those watching and not commenting, I would love you just to give a little shout out so I know you're here. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, a little hitting of the thumbs up so I know you're here. It just helps me with that, you know, that YouTube search juice, as I like to call it. <laughs> and... Joni's here and Irma's here. Yay. Hello, everyone. It also assures you that I really am live. All right. She Fab Thrips, a.k.a. Sarah. Nice, nice, nice. Welcome, everyone, to Monday and Labs for Me. Hey, hey. Um, and I'm sure now you guys are going to say hi, and I'm going to miss some of you, and I apologize. So, and Morgan, I've kind of got my... I've got my microphone over here kind of hiding a little bit of the bottom portion of the chat. So I'm going to try not to miss it. I'm still trying to figure out all like the setting this stuff up. Um, and over this weekend, I just got a computer set up downstairs so that I can do more of my listing and stuff downstairs. Now I just have to figure out how I would make a background behind me because it faces out into my entire room, which is not a good backdrop for a show. <laughs> oh, who else is popping in? Morgan from England. What's 
time is it in England right now? Is it nighttime? Um, Lori and Judy and two wild and crazy girls and Jenny and Stephanie. Ah, so good to see all of you. So good. I am um, hoping my fans are not too loud. For some reason, my upstairs air conditioner is not real efficient and it is not cooling it past about 81 degrees up here. So I have to turn my ceiling fans on, but they're noisy. Oh, it's 9 p.m. in England right now. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. I'm not doing this so late that you can't watch. That's awesome. Okay. Without further ado, let's jump in because I have a lot of stuff to show you and share with you and research with you. And, uh, but first I wanted to go through some things that won't show up on my, oops, let me do something really quick because I can't share customer information with you. So I got to I got to bump these screens so you can't see the customer that bought said products. Oh, hold on. I really should have done this beforehand. Okay. I'm good. It's all good. Dun, dun, dun. There's several things that I did not shoot of me packaging up, but I wanted to share because they're things I have talked about on previous shows and I wanted to show you what is sold. So let me share my screen. So we have the Pence Pottery Elephant Toothbrush Holder from 1994. And uh, this sold, as you can see, in my 50% off sale for $7.49. And, you know, it's not exactly what I had hoped would happen. But here's the thing that you have to realize in this business. It isn't about just holding on to stuff. So that money tied up in that item is better spent now on something that will sell quicker. So that's why I do the 50% off. I still made money. I still made a profit on this item. So it's all good and it's off to a new home. All right, and then um, I sold these Fitz and Floyd Rabbit Cream and Sugars from the Snowy Woods 1996 collection, $39.99. I had them down at the antique mall for a bit. I picked these up at a yard sale long time ago, um, but I didn't list them until just a couple months ago because I was trying to sell them locally first. Uh, but you can see I brought them home and they, they sold pretty quickly. Fitz and Floyd is still a really, really good brand. I sold two of these Objet d'Art trinket boxes. These are those little enameled rhinestoned. I got these at an auction uh, quite some time ago. Um, I, I probably had like 25 of them when I first started. I'm down to my last few and I did put them in the 50% off sale and I had a customer buy this one and this one. So we combined shipping and off they went. So these are still, I mean, these are a good purchase if you can find them. I sold most of them for $20 plus. These are just the last ones I'm clearancing. So they do sell really well. I sold a Tommy Bahama halter dress. I had this in my 50% off sale and it sold for $19.99. Now, the mistake I made on this was I listed it in the winter or actually late fall. So by the time summer rolled around, what I should have done is ended it and relisted it, but I didn't. It got caught into my 50% off sale and you know what? It's 20 bucks. It's 20 bucks. Fake fruit. I've talked about it a lot. Um, again, I was hoping for a little more from these two pieces. Still made a profit. Again, the 50% off sale works really good. I'm telling you guys. All right, those, um, I'm, I toyed around with some clock radios. I'm okay, it sold for 10 bucks plus shipping. It's out the door with a little bit of profit. And these I got at like a big clearance at um, Big Lots, Big Lots. I bought a bunch of stuff for just super cheap because they were just clearancing it. And so this one sold for $16.99 almost paid for everything I bought. So, not quite, but almost. And you might remember the Snoopy Cloisonne earrings. I think I talked about those on a show 
some time ago, sold those for $14.99. I, I do love shipping this kind of stuff for sure. And you've also heard me talk about these jelly bean indoor outdoor rugs that I have been selling. I got them all at an auction. Um, this guy, 40 bucks, 40 bucks to, for the dog lover. Uh, so there you go. That is things, everything else you've seen on my shipping videos. If you want to see everything else that's sold, it's all on my shipping videos that I do at least once, if not twice a week. So we got more of you showing up. JD, um, is it RLC? RLC or is it RIC? Is it RL or R R R I? Or is it Rick? I don't know. I'm confused right now. There's a space. <laughs> Um, four month eBay, eBay or just learning eBay just rated me top rated seller this month. Yay! That means you're selling. Love it. Love it. And, um, yes, everybody's congratulating you. That's awesome. And Christine is here. Hello, Christine. Good to see all of you. Just for those that don't know, I do have a group over on Facebook called Niche to Profit for eBay, Etsy, and more. And I am in that group and everybody participates and helps everybody. And it is a very positive focused group. I have learned over the 20 plus years that I have been doing this eBay selling that it really does no good to go into negativity. Um, I very much become about solving whatever problem they throw at us. And I hope I can instill a little bit of that in YouTube. So that's what we do over there. We share, we problem solve, we identify stuff and all that, all that good stuff. So yeah. All right. Tri-State Picker Mom is here and Jen is here. All right. Good to see you all. Also something, I'm going to put this out here because as the viewership and attendance at the live streams grow, I will be looking for some people who would like to help me be moderators over there. Just it's bound to happen. We're going to get some riffraff in here that has to be dealt with. And I would love um, one or two people over there that could hit that little delete comment button if it happens, because I'm not always on top of it. So if that's something you'd be interested in, shoot me a message. Shoot me a message. So we got 1969 Nathaniel and Terry Ann's Eclectic This and That. Good to see you all. Okay, let's jump into stuff. Now, I have actually had this stuff still boxed up since before I went on my San Diego trip because what I did, knowing that I would be away for a few days, I went out and did some extra shopping to get some extra video footage to kind of get ahead. And, um, and then I went to San Diego and I wanted to get the San Diego footage up timely. So I, I did that. And now I've got to get to all this stuff that I bought before that trip. So I try very, very hard not to do any of my research or looking up or any of that until I can do it here live with you guys. So you can see if I fumble, if I can't find it, or like what my thought process is for those items that become super difficult, super difficult. I could say that. Um, so uh, this is the Goodwill where I bought all of the Fenton Silvercrest. So we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive into that today, but I will show you some other things first such as. See, I haven't even taken the tape off. This actually is, and I will take the tape off now. Oh, maybe. Okay. Oh my. See? It's all live. <laughs> all right. This is, oh, it's three pieces. That's why it's so weird. Okay. So this is a mug that also has the strainer, and then it has a lid. So I guess you could actually just put the lid on the mug as well, right? Anybody like drink that way? 
I don't. I'm not a tea or a coffee drinker. I'm assuming this is for tea though, right? Or does it have another purpose other than tea? Like, is there a type of coffee that you would use a, a strainer thingy with? I don't know. Um, it is a new piece. It is from World Market. Now, the World Market store here, I love it. Oh my goodness. I go in there and I want a little bit of everything, um, but I can't afford it. So that to me was kind of like, okay, I can't really, well, I could afford it. I just, I'm too cheap. Let me put it that way. It's expensive stuff, um, but it's this frou-frou stuff. But I just thought the bird was absolutely stunningly beautiful. I'm getting a weird glare off my little window there. Um, so that's what made me grab this off the shelf was just the look of it. Okay, you guys are saying it's for loose tea. It steeps the tea for tea leaves. Okay. All right. I'm not going crazy. It is for tea. I thought so, but I always want to call on the experts here. So, um, I buy a lot of stuff. I don't know what it is guys. I honest, this is, this is what I do. <laughs> so don't be scared if you don't know what it is. If it's got a really nice appeal to it and it's calling you from the shelf, pick it up. Okay. Let's go see what it sells for. So we know it's world market. So is it a tea mug? It's not really a tea cup, it's a tea mug, right? So eBay's always gonna give you best match. Change that over to highest because I wanna see what the highest ones are going for. So let's share. These are actives. Let's go to, and I may change my search terms here in a sec if I am not finding it. Yeah, see, I'm not really finding. Well, here, tea infuser ceramic mugs. Okay, these are pretty plain, Jane. Okay, so maybe, oh, wait, there's one. Ooh, that one has horsies on it. Um, so we know they sold this one for, so if you add these two prices together, that would be like 30 bucks. So with shipping of $15, so they probably sold this one for like 15 plus shipping. That seems really high on the shipping. So I'm going to say this is an easy 20 bucks. I'm going to call it an easy 20 bucks. Sure. Why not? Let me try one thing up here. Let's go world market tea. I'm just going to put, I'm going to leave off anything else but tea and see. What else? Because I want to see if there's any higher amounts coming up. Teapot, tea sets, tea, tea, tea. Nope, that seems to be about the price. Okay. And then we have some more down here. Now, what's going to sell this is the fact that it is a beautiful Asian bird print. Um, now I'm just going here to see what the highest one of these, you know what I'm going to put, since the word infuser, let's put, let's put that, ah, that slowed it down a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So they're, looks like they're listing them for about the $20. Okay. Okay. We're good. We're good in at about the $20 range. So, because that one's beautiful too. So that's it. $20 bill. As I thought. All right. And then speaking of world market, also there were the, now I'm pretty sure he probably had a lid. So I'm a little bummed he doesn't have his lid, but he does have a spoon. Um, but these are, and I say these because he has friends. These are little I'm going to say, oh, you know what? I can maybe move that spoon over to him and then he'd be complete. And then the other guy would just be a cute little owl. Um, but creamer, sugar, and I'm not sure what the owl's supposed to be. But here's where I'm pretty bummed out because I am quite sure when I pick these off the shelf, their little ears, oops, where's my camera, were not chipped. And now they both have a little chip on the ear, which probably happened when the person was wrapping them up and clanking them and putting them into the box. 
It happens. Um, it happened to me at Savers yesterday. This kid, like, it was just putting this glass and china in a bag, and I'm like, um, you need to wrap those. It's like, oh, okay, okay, um, yeah. And, and it was like, you know, he was a teenager. I swear they don't teach these teenagers anything anymore. Anyway. <laughs> I have two of them and I get it. It's work. It's work to teach these teenagers some work ethic, but got to do it. Parents of teenagers, don't give up on that. It's hard. We got to do it. All right. Now I am going to look up world market. You know what? I'm going to put the obvious here first. Okay. That just said there was none. Oh, wait. No, there's none. World market raccoon. Am I spelling raccoon right? I'm spelling raccoon right. Why is there no world market raccoon? Oh, look at the little spoons. Oh, I'm on the hunt for those now. How cute are those? Okay, I digress. So here's the fox and raccoon set for $10. That does not excite me. Um, but what I'm going to do now that I know that it's the woodland critters, I'm going to try that. Yeah, no. Okay, so here. Ah, it makes me feel much better. So here's the fox sold for $17.99. Granted, it was new with tag. If I put the fox and the raccoon together, I should be able to list it for like $29.99. Let's go see if there's any out there now. And there's not a whole lot available if somebody's actually searching for the correct thing. So it very even with a little bit of damage, I think will be okay at $29.99 on those. The owl, gosh, I don't know. Let's look. I don't, I want to know what he was supposed to be. Let's see. Let's go to sold. No, it's not that. Uh, nope, it's not that. He's definitely got his head. Huh. Oh, look. This one doesn't have a lid either. Well. That's interesting. So you would just, I guess it's a mug with a spoon. Huh? It's just a mug with a spoon. No. I'm... Okay. Could it just be coincidence that the one I find and this one both have no top? Could it have been made with just no top? Like what could you store in there that wouldn't get ruined by being open to the air? Hmm. That's a little puzzling. I, I do think I still might switch, if it'll go, I might switch the spoon over to the raccoon and just sell him as a little base. Repurpose. Repurpose. I love it. You guys are all talking over there in the chat, getting to know one another. Yay. Tiger purples in Arizona. What part of Arizona? I'm from Arizona. Well, not originally, but I spent about 10 years in Arizona down in Tucson area and a little bit in Casa Grande. So I do know Arizona. Okay, where to go with things? Okay, you guys move over here. So one of the comments I got recently on the channel on one of the videos was, gosh, I see you guys pick up, uh, you guys meaning, you know, other YouTubers, thrifters, pick up all these cute little critter things. Do they really sell? I mean, yeah, yeah, because Buying is an emotional thing if you're not buying something that you need, you know, which is still emotional. You know, I'm just saying. Toilet paper, I think we've seen the emotion in that over the last few months, right? Nobody needed 26 things of toilet paper, but yet they bought it because it was a fear. It was emotion. So we buy on emotion almost always. Even the food we go pick out, you know, is emotional. Like we have an attachment to certain foods. That attachment is an emotion. So buying is emotional. It's very psychological. And these cutesy little animals spark emotion in many of us. And for those that it doesn't spark emotion in, I'll pray for you. I'm just saying, how does, how does somebody not get, I guess I don't understand. How does somebody not get a little bit emotional over seeing a cute critter? Come on. Come on. Now, I know we all have our things, 
like, you know, puppies versus kitties versus, you know, but it's got to be something that like pulls your little heartstrings, right? Okay. Um, and so <laughs> don't get me started on the toilet paper. I know. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, yeah. Got to catch up on your comments over here a little bit. All right. So um, so I buy things that tug at me. That's how I've developed my niche. And I have found customers who like the things that I like. For the most part, that's how I developed my niche. Because there's a lot of things you guys will see me pass up. And you tell me in the comments all the time, why didn't you get that? Or you passed that. And like, it just didn't speak to me. It really needs to speak to me. And the stuff that doesn't particularly speak to me, but I know it has good value, I will pick up. But for the most part, the stuff that I'm willing to sell for 15 to $20 needs to speak to me. Um, because that makes it fun. It makes it fun to find it. It makes it fun to sell it and handle it and research it and deal with it and all that good stuff. Yep, yep, yep. You guys are talking about toilet paper. Now I got you started now. I got you started now. Um, I am hoping that we don't run into another toilet paper hoarding session. But I'm ready this time. Who's ready? Okay, I got to know. Tell me in the comments who's ready for the next one. Apparently my dogs are ready. Yeah. That would be Peanut. That would mean my mail's getting picked up right now. Um, oh, and now the birds are going, ah, it's chaos here. Um, yeah, who's ready for the next lockdown phase? Let me know in the comments if you have been picking up. Now, I'm not saying buying a ton. I'm going to have to scold her. Peanut. I'm glad she listens sometimes. Um. So I have been picking up an extra roll of, not roll, like package, like every other grocery trip, which normally I, I, I would do, I would do the toilet paper like I would gasoline and I'd get down to like one or two rolls or, you know, like that quarter of a tank or less and then go fill up. Well, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm actually stocking up just a little bit. Okay. We digress. Let's talk turkey. <laughs> so this just uh, was a really nice, inviting colored turkey on the shelf for $2.99. Je vous or just turkey tag. I have not peeled this yet. The reveal, he could be world market, huh? He's kind of that same kind of quality, but I don't know. I don't know. I bought him because he looked, come on, he looked good. I can't. I can't get his little sticker off. Okay, come on. There we go. And we have to go, you know, we have to go, we have to peel slowly or it'll just all fall apart in my hands. Oh, oh, it's marked with something. I see a mark. Oh, I'm trying to get it so it does not warren. Oh, it's a Boston warehouse piece. Okay, okay. Let me peel this enough that you guys can see the, I tend to not peel price tags in the store. If it's a price that I can make money no matter what the mark says, I'll just buy it, which was the case with this guy. But there you go. He is a, there we go, 2001. So he's, he's almost vintage. I'm going to call him vintage. Technically, you know, he's just under that 20 year mark, but we're close enough. So he's a Boston warehouse turkey, and I'm not sure what he is. I got you guys talking about toilet paper over there. I did it. Okay, let's go look up the turkey. So what I know is he is a Boston warehouse turkey. What I don't know is what exactly his purpose is. So I'm not going to guess. I'm just going to put some basic words in there and figure it out. And I'm being told he is a candy dish. Now, this one isn't nearly as pretty as the one I've got. And that appears to be the only one that's sold. So let's look at what's available. There's $35. See, I like that. And that one's silver plate. Okay. I still like that price. 
Um, Delarobia. Delarobia. Okay. Huh. All right. Now, this is not the same one. That's not the same one. Oh. So to, could it be a, it can't be a gravy boat. There's no way to, would you call this a gravy boat? Nah, I think I'm better off selling it as a candy dish or a condiment serving set. Oh my goodness. Okay. There are lots of ideas on what this could be. See, this is the 2006 dip bowl. Do you see how it's called so many different things? So you really have to decide what you want to call it. I think I am going to call it for the purposes of best getting this sold. I'm going to call it a candy dish. I think that is the best way to describe it. And I think this time of year is better to be listing it uh, because we have Thanksgiving. It's only a few months away. Dare I say it's coming. And right after that Christmas. Is that insane? It's like a month until we start getting ready for fourth quarter. List, list, list. Okay, so I will list him at 1999. He'll be listed at 1999. All right. This little guy. You may write. Oh no, I just noticed something. I really hate when I miss this stuff in the store. All right, I only paid $3.99 for them and my daughter will love him, even though there's some little, can you see? Ugh, there's two of them are missing their tails. Holy smoker, you guys know what it is though, right? It's a uh, uh, John Perry. Gosh darn. I didn't even notice there was two broken tails. I wonder if they got broke. I can't imagine I would have bought this. I'm gonna have to go back and watch the video. I have a feeling the same person who chipped my little ears, on my little guys may have broken the little tails off of these. Um, I'm gonna have to go review and see. that. That is so obvious that I cannot imagine I would have missed that. That's okay. My daughter will love it. And we will look up what it would have been worth had it not been broken. Yeah. Oh, no. You know, um, Tiger Tiger Purple, never. I never, ever return a thrift shop purchase. Never. Um, my feeling is it's, number one, not worth my time to return it. And number two, most things, like the things with the little chips, I can still make a profit. And something like this, it'll just be loved by my daughter who takes in all of the animal rejects. She's so sweet that way. <laughs> That's why we have a menagerie too. Okay, let's look up John Perry dolphins. Yeah, that's that's true, Christine. I have to keep keep my eyes. Oh, it skipped on me. I'll go back to yours, Christine. I was in system packing breakables myself. Yeah, ah, it's getting that way. But uh, Christine said you have to keep your eye on the salespeople all the time. I try. Oh gosh, wait till you guys see what I bought yesterday. Oh, I bought the most incredible thing, but it was heavy glass breakable and I had to have help getting it to my car. So I was like holding my breath, but I cannot wait to show you. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. Okay. Um, John Perry is still heavily, heavily collected. Now these are just the dolphins. Let's go over to solds and you will see that some of them sell for really, really good money. Here, I'm gonna give you full screen because I think sometimes it gets too small and you can't see it. Um, yeah, let's see, where's this little guy? He's not a big, big money piece, this one, because it's small. Uh, and it's missing the little, you know, this little piece on here that most of them have. They're, they're usually, I almost said always, I have never found one that wasn't on driftwood. 
that's usually one of the key features. And then there's this material that he used is some special, special kind of resin, very, very unique to his pieces. And that's the other way you recognize these. Uh, but you can see these hold value. So uh, definitely pick these up when you see them. And, and there's a lot of places that don't see the value. And a lot of places that, you know, if you just go with the best match or the ended recently, let me show you what happens. Like if they did the same search with ended recently, they're going to look at the price of things ended recently to do their pricing. And that's not always accurate pricing of what you can get or the value of something. See? Um, so that's why a lot of times, even if they're looking stuff up, you can still get some pretty good deals on stuff. So I probably would have gotten 20 bucks for this one. I only paid four bucks. So Rachel will be happy. She'll have some more dolphins in her room, which is just what she needs. Right, mom? <laughs> I'm turning my poor daughter into a hoarder. I know I am. I know I am. I can't help it. We love animals. Yeah. Let's see. At uh, this Goodwill, everything sells as is. Sometimes the store is so much picked over is unbelievable. People just don't care anymore. Yeah, I know. It's, you know what? It is just the time that we live in and we have to adapt to. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, you were talking about other stores that seven days of purchase, you get a gift card. They don't give you cash back. Yeah. Like I said, to me, it's just not, and I, ha I would have to remember what store I got it from because Honestly, I go to like six different stores in a day and I put all my receipts together and and it doesn't say on the receipts exactly. Yeah, it would be a little bit mind blowing. OK, speaking of dolphins, again, this is something it's probably not worth a whole bunch of money, but just the eye appeal of it. And I'm going to show you a little something. I know that the thrift store priced this based on the original Marshall's price, okay, of $4.99. Now, the thing I know about Marshall's is it is a discount store, and they're all closed now, too, right? There are no more Marshall's. Or are there? Are there still Marshall's? I think they're closed. They've closed them out here. Um, I have done a lot of retail arbitrage. When I was doing Amazon, I would go into Marshalls, TJ Maxx, Ross, um, Tuesday mornings, all big lots, all of those stores that the big retail stores use to liquidate things because it's about a time on the shelf thing for them. So you can go find a lot of stuff that you can turn around and flip for good money. So they price this at $1.99. Let's see what it goes for on eBay now. Could be a lot more. So I'm just going to put dolphin bottle opener. I'm not putting in the brand just yet. Now I want to sort by highest. I'm going to go back to my highest. So let's see. Da, da, da. Got one seven $20 shipping. Now you and I both know that didn't cost no $20 to ship, but okay. Oh, it's from Australia. Okay, maybe it did. Maybe it did. Stand corrected. I was going to say, though. Yeah, more like five bucks to ship. Yeah, there we go. See, here we go. But still, look. Oh, this is from Is. So, this could work out really good if these are, like, mostly international. And I've got one here. I like that. And then you get down to the lower ones. And that's okay. Things can sell lower. I'm good with that. What do we have listed for sale currently? That is my competition. Yes, yeah, look. I was thinking about fifteen. I was thinking this one, you know, fifteen. I'll probably list it at nineteen ninety nine because I can get away with that because these are all international. So I can probably get away with it because I don't have that big heavy shipping cost. So, hey, there we go. I will turn two bucks into twenty bucks, even fifteen bucks, all day long. Yes, yes, yes. So let's see. Oh, you guys are talkative today. Thank you, Alicia, and welcome to the channel. Yeah. 
Um, I have some glass whales on driftwood bought when we were stationed in Hawaii, bought straight from the artist. Wish I still had his card. He said if they ever broke, he would fix them. That's pretty amazing. You could probably find out who it was. I mean, we could do a little sleuthing if you go over to the Niche to Profit Facebook group and post that, post a picture. I bet we could track him down for you. I bet we could. Yeah. Ah, so some of you do still have, you have Marshalls on the East Coast. All right. All right. Yes, and mine is new in the box, right? Right, right, right. That is a definite, definite plus. I didn't see one that was new in the box, so you were right. Yeah. Oh, you listed yours, Yvonne. Oh, I need to go see which one that was now. Oh, I got to show you this one. Yvonne, Thrifty Rich, who has her own channel. I love to watch as well. Let's see. I'm going to go. Is it? So it's in the currently listed. Let's see. Let's see if it comes up now. John Perry Dolphins. La, 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 la. Oh, I think I know which one it is. There. Is it this one? No, that's not you, is it? Which one is yours? Tell me, tell me. It's got to be one of these expensive ones. And if it's not one of those more expensive ones, I'm going to tell you raise the price. <laughs> Oh, Marshall's is open in Colorado. Isn't that weird how stuff closes in different places? Okay, I'm going to let Yvonne tell me what, what, what the price is on hers. I can find it by the price. If you tell me price, then we'll go back and find it. Yay, yay, yay. Hi, Mandy from Australia. How are you guys doing down there? It's like, you know, there was all the big Australian brush fires were like the big news here. And then all of a sudden, you know, cousin Rona hit and we don't hear anything about anybody else anymore. So that's crazy. But yeah, welcome. Um, whoop, this thing just flips. You guys are just having all your little personal conversation over there, which I'm totally good with. Yeah. So Yvonne, tell me what the price of yours was and we'll pull it up and take a look. All right. Ha. I buy fun stuff, you guys. Again, it's the emotion thing. Who doesn't love some pizza coasters? Now, um, another reason I picked these up for $1.99. When I worked at the thrift store here in town, they got a lot of donations from World Market. And they got donations of this Kickerland brand all the time. Kickerland, 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 however you say that. And the stuff sells really good. We were sending it into Amazon. So that's how I knew these are probably $15 to $20 coasters. And we will look them up. I will come back to you. Here, I'm going to open a new window. I'll show you in a sec. I promise I will share my screen. Here, I'm just going to pull up this brand for you real quick. All right, let me share the screen again. Um, so I've just pulled up Kickerland and sorted by highest first. So you see there's 4,000 results. Here's how you kind of, you know, Amazon tells you sell through rate. eBay does too, but you have to sleuth a little bit. So 4,150 so listings. Then we go over here to solds and you've got 1,223 results. That's about a 25% sell through rate, right? kind of sort of in a rough about way, but it does tell you that this is a, an item that does sell. Probably now, if that number were higher, if this sell, if the results were like in the 2,500 to 3,500 number range, then we could say that is a hot, hot item that you definitely want to pick up. But this is good. This is a good sell through. Okay, I'm going to put pizza coasters. Five bucks. See, another lesson. If I get one result at $5, I'm definitely not going to list mine at $5. I'm not taking that result as market value. That's just what that one seller happened to list and sell theirs for. So now if there was like 20 sellers that had sold them for $5, I'd be concerned. But when we come over here, 
we see $10 plus five shipping, 14. So they're more like $10. They're more like $10. But there's a lot of them that are lower. So you know what I'm going to do with these? To the booth. I will take them to the booth and sell them for 10 to 12, probably $12. I'll probably put $12 on them at the booth. $2 into $12. That's what I will do with those. Unless I come up with somebody who needs just a funny gag gift, and then I quite possibly might just give them as a gift. Who else does their Christmas shopping from their sourcing? Come on, I can't be the only one. Can't be the only one. All right, I was so excited to finally find a piece of Ray Dunn in the wild. And then I found more when I was in San Diego, but this was my first Ray Dunn found in a thrift shop. Now it does say bridesmaid, which is probably not one of the highest sellers. And we did already pass June, but I think there's a lot of people probably postponing their weddings because of cousin Rona and uh, it was 99 cents. So what did I have to lose to figure out what a bridesmaid spray Dunn sells for? And for those that don't know about the Ray Dunn phenomenon, let me just show you the souls. Okay, wow. Is there really a $15,000 Ray Dunn out there? Come on now, come on. I think not. I think that's a little cray cray. All right. And my daughter hates when I say that. She says that is so outdated saying cray cray, but I like saying cray cray. Okay. Wow. Wow. $4,500 for that birdhouse. Hello. $3,500 for the white pears. Birdhouse, guys. Birdhouse. Apparently, bird. <laughs> Anything Ray Dunn, bird. Oh, my. My, 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 my. Ray Dunn, birdhouse. Put that on your list, guys. Put that on your list. And if anybody finds one of these, tell me. I would be super excited for you. Um, then we've got the pig dish and the bee dish. The oval dishes with animals on them. These are solds. These are solds, people. Wow. Salt. Wow. Okay. So I am sure there is something more to this whole Ray Dunn thing that I haven't quite dug into yet. But these are the things you want to find in the wild. I'm still, I'm still sitting here in a little bit of shock. I had no idea the prices were this high. That's pretty amazing. Amazing. Okay. I could do this for a while, so I won't. You guys can do that more on your own. Um, so let's do Ray Dunn mug. We've still got 5,000. Okay. I'm going to go with Brides Made Mug. And... Da, da, da. Bridesmaid phones, a set of two. All right, I'm good. I think I can get about 15 bucks for it, right? Yeah, I know. Again, look, $5, why? Because it was on auction. Nobody is looking for this item on an auction. The person that is going to buy this is shopping for their bridesmaids. They are going to be wanting to buy as they find it not bid and wait for an auction. So this is not a really good auction item as these results show you. Look, this was a bid, bid, bid. Don't list your Ray Dunn mug on auction unless it's super rare. Okay, um, and $8. Yeah, you know what? Um, this one will be about 15. It'll be, and I may try this down at the booth first too for 15. Uh, because you never know if that bride-to-be is like shopping in the antique mall and goes, oh, that would be great for my bridesmaids. And then buys this one and then goes and looks for more. All right. But it was so fun. So fun to find that. 
Yeah, just check. Yes, it's my cousin Rona. Um, you know, because YouTube has bots that look for certain words to be said and stuff. And if I were to say the actual word, I could get demonetized on this video because of that. They would find it unsuitable for monetization. So we have to be very careful. Yep, yep, yep. So I don't buy for Christmas gifts, but I buy for gifts baskets. I make welcome baskets for new people in the neighborhood. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yay. Yay. Somebody else says cray cray. Noon Rendezvous says cray cray. All right. I am not alone. I am not alone. <laughs> All right. Yeah, for sure. You need to look out for Ray Dunn. Now, as I've shown, it doesn't all sell for big money, um, but lots of it does. Lots of it does. Yay. Hey, Mary. Good to see you. You scored a Ray Dunn Humble Mug for $1. Sonia, what does that sell for? The My Sharona. Ah, I love that too. I love the My Sharona. Ooh, I'm gonna start singing that now. No, don't don't put me there. Oh, it's too late. It's in my head now. I used to I'm vivid memories. Roller skating in my best friend's driveway. And I can picture the house. The garage was open. The radio was playing. And my Sharona would come on. And we would like, yeah. I don't even know. I think I was, I don't even think I was a teenager quite yet. Maybe. Maybe right, right there. I was, I was, I was right there. <laughs> you know, my mom's in the chat. She'll probably know exactly what age I was. It was on Utica Street, Mom. Yeah, I think, I think that was Utica in La Habra. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I always look for Ray Dunn in the wild, but since my last name is Dunn, I end up keeping them. Ah, there you go. Wouldn't it be a kick to find out you're related? to the designer and that you need to maybe look into getting yourself on the will. I'm just saying stranger things have happened. Okay. I know these aren't old, but I love them. <laughs> I got two of them and they were just calling to me from the shelf. They were $3.99. Um, they got a little bit of scratching now. I'm seeing, you know, as I hold it up to the light, I, you can't see it, but there's little like pinholes. But if it's set down somewhere, uh, you can't see it. I, I love these, and I don't know who done them. I don't know anything about them. I will call them peacock bowls, peacock feather bowls. That's what they look like to me. Am I off completely on that? Do they not look like peacock feathers? I mean, what would you guys call them? Let me know in the comments what you would call these glass bowls. They're trying to mimic goofus glass. You know, the antique goofus glass, same technique, the solid on the back showed through the clear glass. That's, that's what it's supposed to be made like. And goofus glass doesn't bring very good money anymore. But I just really like these. And I figure down at the booth, I could probably put 15 bucks a piece on them. Because, again, emotion, the way they grabbed me, they're going to grab somebody whose house they would actually fit into. Okay, so I got those. Okay, you guys are agreeing. Indian glass art bowls. Oh, Indian glass art. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Melana found five Ray Dunn birdhouses at the Goodwill. What? Five of them? Oh, girl, you better get those listed now that you've uh, seen what those suckers are worth. What? Oh, that's that would be an that'd be like hitting a jackpot on a casino out here of five of those Ray Dunn birdhouses. Come on. Oof. All right. This is one of those items like I have no idea who did it. I don't know anything about it. All I know is it was really unique and really interesting and has all these little applied flowers. And I'm going to try to figure out 
what this might be called keyword wise so that I can get a good price for it. Now I did just notice just a couple little, little chippies on, again, I don't believe that was there. That's not a chip, that's a discoloration. I don't believe that chip was there when I bought it because I looked this thing over pretty darn good. Um, I have not peeled the, this looks like it was set inside of another piece at one point. Oops, come on. All right, it also now shows me it had a sticker at some point. So it's not so old that it wasn't a stickered item. But I'm still not sure if the crazing on that is manufactured or real either. And crazing is all of these little veiny lines. Sometimes that's put on things to make them look old. Um, and sometimes it is natural crazing. I'm leaning towards this being natural crazing because it's not very even. Usually when they apply the crazing after, it's much more even. So, yeah, it's it's unique. Yeah, so let's go look and see if we can find it. All right, I'm going to start with what I know. So we know it's white applied flowers. Now there's other terms I could be using, but not all of you may know those terms when you find it. So I'm trying to simplify this down to terms that you would actually know and be able to use to find the item. Um, flowers pot. And I'm going to go into, because right now I'm just looking for my keywords. So it's not Belik. All right. Um, ba -ba. So let me take out the white. Well, we know it's not Meeson. In my dreams, would it be Meeson? I'm just right now looking for some keywords. Apparently, Bleak makes a lot of this. Okay, so I'm going to go back here. Sorry, I didn't mean to make you dizzy. So I'm going to go white, pottery, pot with flowers. I'll take out the word applied. Ooh, 596. That's a little more than I wanted to come up with, so we will go down into solds. Okay, let's see. Not finding anything like it. But I, what I am finding, what this is telling me, is there's some good white pottery, plain white pottery, that sells for good money. I get that it's McCoy. Some of it is just plain. Ooh, that's cool, huh? I like that. I'd be buying that. This also shows you some very plain white pieces that you should be looking for too. Even some of this Bauer. Brush McCoy, McCoy. I really think this set inside of another pot and that's why the white might not be the best term. But okay, so here's what I normally do. This is what I would do. I would go to my friend Google and I would go white applied flowers pottery. And I'm going to do an images search. Let's see if we can find anything. <laughs> see, I'm leaning toward this being what I would call a Blanc de Chine, but I'm just going to go. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to reverse this. So if I say Blanc de Chine flowers pot, nada, nothing sold. But here you can see Blanc de Chine, what it looks like. So to me, this truly is a Blanc de Chine piece. And now, as I've said many times, I'm going to go. There we go. 
as I've said many times, I'm really happy when I can't find an exact match because I can set the price. And if I had that much trouble finding, so will somebody else. Because you can see, okay, come on, there we go. Um, you can see the term Blanc de Chine brings value. And, oh, I am off screen. Okay, I stole a drink. By the way, guys, for those of you that pray, keep me in your prayers. I'm trying to kick the Dr. Pepper habit. I truly, truly am trying to kick it. I have not had one today. So this is just a little aside, a little personal info for those of you who have stuck around this long. Um, I am totally addicted to caffeine. I confess. My name is Danny, and I am a caffeineaholic. Okay, I'm going to say it right now. Um, and I know that uh, sugar and caffeine are my two vices that I am so trying to get healthier. So what I have done to kick the Dr. Pepper and that desire for the Dr. Pepper based on the caffeine is switched to these, uh, they're sparkling water with organic caffeine. And they're not bad. They're good. So if I can get myself switched over to these, these have no sugar no sugar. So I can kick the sugar part and the taste drive of the caffeine, switch to something like this. And from this, I can narrow it down to sparkling water without the caffeine. So see my, see my thinking there, but um, it's tough. It's tough. I've got a lifetime of sugar and caffeine addiction that I am trying to conquer. So I'm just, I'm putting it out here publicly to be accountable. So, uh, Kick me in the butt on that one, okay? Yeah, so far so good though. This is my second day. Yesterday I had a half a Dr. Pepper. Today I've had none. So we'll see how it goes, we'll see how it goes. All right, back to what we were talking about. So I will list this as a Blanc de Chine applied flower pottery. I'm gonna call it a, oh, there's a word pot inset. I don't know. Let's just try that. Um, oops, pottery pot inset. I don't even know if that's a right word. Oh, so they switched me to insert. Okay. If you think so, even that didn't come back. Uh, no, 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 no. Let me go back to my in inset. Why does in why do I why do I want to say inset? No, that's not the right word, is it? Darn, I thought maybe I was on to something. Okay. It was worth a shot. Might take a little more finesse. Only cuz I'm curious more than anything cuz I know I can sell it without doing any more research. I would just sell it. What gets me is though it's a pottery piece for planting a flower, but there's no drainage. Why would they not put the drainage? Oh, here's the other reason I think this crazing is real. So look on the inside. See the crazing on the inside and how much tighter it is? Like it's, yeah, and on the outside, it's more lines. So I think this is genuine crazing from just uh, heat and cold differences. It's not super old, but I would put this piece probably to 70s or 80s is what I'm thinking. Um, it's a cool piece. So I will probably list this in the 50 to $60 range. Just off of that info. And where can I put you where you're not going to get broken? Come down here. Okay, there you go. Ugh. Okay, these. I spotted one. And I was like, ah, uh, I really like it, but it's a single, what do I do with it? And then I spotted the second one. These cool canisters with the handles. All right, anybody ever seen these guys? I love them. I might have to keep it. My son is now a coffee drinker. So I never thought I'd see the day my son would be a coffee drinker, buddy. Um, there's nothing on the bottoms. I'm going to just search these with canister with handle. That's what I'm going to put in. 
and I'm going to see. I got too much stuff on my desk now. I mean, look at the little spoon things on this. Like, it holds it on the side. That's so cool. Hopefully, it still holds it when I take the tape off of there, too. Never thought about that. I hope so. It should. All right. But the, the tops are, are see-through. So if you don't remember what you put in it, you can just look in and go, oh, yeah, that's the coffee beans. All right. I can do that. So let's go see. Uh, canister with a handle. I just loved the, I don't know, again, emotion. It just kind of, it grabbed me. Wow. At those prices. All right. Let's go to solds. That's what's really important. 259 results. What? Apparently. Oh, they're they're okay. They're they're talking handles like on the top. Like, come on. Oh, we don't want vacuum cleaners. Okay, here's another way that you can um, get this down. Now, I'm gonna go with home and garden just because these are newer. So we're gonna try there first. Not plastic. Not plastic. Yeah. Right now, my first search is just trying to find what they are. Okay, let's go back. Let's go into, let's go into pottery and glass. Why not? It just narrows your results a little more so you can skim through. You see, oh, did I see Ray Dunn again? Look at it. Ray Dunn is everywhere. Sell, sell, sell that Ray Dunn. Okay. Um, not there. So let's look, uh, 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 uh. let's go back to collectibles, maybe. I don't know, maybe they are collectibles. See, not finding, not finding. Hmm, you guys got ideas? Canister with spoon? Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. So this is where, again, Google could be my friend. So I'm going to look up canister with handle and spoon. No, not like that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. These are really mod, you know, they're, I'm, I'm, I'm at a little bit of a loss for, descriptive words on these. You know what else that I liked about them is they had clear lid. Let's see. Or see-through lid. See-through lid. Let's see. Wow. Not finding. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm not... I'm not real good at that reverse image search thing. I've never had good results with that. So I tend to not spend much time on it. And because I don't have a picture right now, I can't really do it live on the show either. Um, I'm really just, I mean, I'm not sure I'm going to sell these, honestly, because I really like them. Um, let's see, canister, um, handle, and spoon. I mean, the spoon's a big part of it, so let's see. So it put me back into all categories. Yeah, nothing in souls. I wonder if it's like an Ikea thing. It's got kind of that funky Ikea kind of shape. Yeah, I'm not finding it. Huh. So if I list these, if I list these, this is what I'm going to list them as. I will make it up as I go because I can and you can. Um, I would list this as a pottery canister with handle, see-through lid, spoon, retro or something because it's got it's really got that retro mod kind of shape and color and everything and i would probably list the small one at 39.99 
and the large one at $49.99. Because I can. Because you can. That's what I'm telling you guys. You do not have to cheap your stuff. If you can't find it or somebody else sells it cheaper, you can list it at a high price and go from there. What's the worst that can happen? It doesn't sell at that price. Then you know what you do? You run a sale. I honestly think I'm going to end up keeping these though. I really, I, it's not really my colors, but if I can't find some others that are like in my colors, I just might have to because at least the big one for the coffee, I'm just saying. Um, scoop instead of spoon. Oh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Found lots under what under kitchen canister with spoon. Oh, let's look. Kitchen canister with spoon. Not not quite the same though. Let's see. Yeah, that's these have spoons, but they're not the same. These are cooler and funkier. The handle in the side is like the clincher for me. I love that handle in the side. I just love it. Yeah, look, they're not. There's, I'm all the way to the bottom. Let's look at solds. And Mickey Mouse. Yep, nothing. Nothing. Yeah, okay. I can do whatever I want with them. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I have, you know, I, I, I don't get along with Pinterest. I do a Google search in the images. A lot of times it'll give me Pinterest and I go over there and it's like a wild goose chase. Oh, so one of my things, and it, some of you who have followed me for a long time know, time is money. I will not spend more than five minutes on research, honestly, unless I know the piece I have is worth a lot of money, like my Stuben pieces and that sort of thing. I will dig a little deeper on those. If I have something rare, I will dig a little deeper on those. But this kind of stuff, truly, if I can't find it in five minutes, especially if I can't find it on eBay, I make it up. And I make it up, you know, not outrageously, but based on what is somebody willing to pay for a canister and kind of go in there and on the cool factor and all of that. So that's, that's how you do it, guys. That's how you do it. All right. Who wants to talk about some Fenton? Now, it's funny. I pass Fenton up all the time. I, I'm, I'm a little bit of a glass snob in that my passion of glass is the, the early 1900s, 1800s, you know, the American Brilliant, the EAPG, the early American press glass, and then some of like the art decos, like in the Stuben and the, uh, oh gosh, uh, the Baccarat and, you know, those real uh, kinds of glass. And Murano, the mid-century Murano, because that's when Murano was big. Do you guys know why all that glass was made on the island of Murano? This is an interesting little fact. And I, and I was realizing that not many people know this. So all of the Murano glass that we're really like attracted to, it's like the hot decorating item, the mid-century stuff. So they moved these glass makers over to an island because their factories were causing too many fires. So now they moved them to, and, and the reason this came up for me recently was because with Italy and the cousin Rona and all that going on, they have shut down the island of Murano. Like right now, Murano glass is not being produced because it is still being produced. The artisans have, you know, still continued to make this glass through the century. Well, there's a big deal about will the island open back up? Will they be able to? And 
yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting stuff. Pretty interesting stuff. Keep formula secret. What formula? Ooh, do share what formula you're, you're referring to. I don't keep anything secret. I am really bad about keeping secrets, guys. Don't tell me secrets. I'm really bad about keeping them. I'm a Sagittarius. We say everything. I can't lie either. Like, if you know me, I can't eat, like, even if I'm asked to tell a little white lie, I can't do it. I can't. I can't play poker. I'm horrible. Okay. I guess that's kind of a good trait, but yeah. So I can't keep secrets very well either. But I tell people that straight out. All right. So what I'm going back to is Fenton glass to me, even though it has value, even though, um, it's very collectible. To me, the Fenton glass was a mass market glass. It was a, a heavily manufactured glass. The molds now have gotten into the wrong hands, you know, so there's, there's reproductions being made and all of this stuff. Um, so Fenton has never been, it's not a fine glass. It's not an intricate glass. It's not, it's got a very heavy feel to it. It's sometimes very coarse compared to some of the other glasses. So I've always just steered away from Fenton, but through watching Jocelyn, the crazy lamp lady, uh, and her picking up Fenton and selling it like crazy, I'm like, oh, well, maybe I need to be giving this a better look and stop being such a glass snob. So I don't shut my mind off to Fenton. I don't actively seek it out. But in this case, there was an entire shelf of Fenton Silvercrest. So I picked up all of it. And here it is. This was actually like the first piece I saw that caught my eye because it's a little different. It's got a much finer ruffle on the edge, which is a little more workmanship. And it's an interesting. And this type of bowl is called a nappy. The little bowls, the little handles, they call them nappies. Is my friend from England still here? Because I do believe that, no. Because in a nappy in England is actually a diaper, right? Do I have that right? Where did the term nappy come from for these? Anybody know? I thought that was it, but now I'm thinking, no, that can't be it. All right, so, oh, 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 okay. So on um, Murano, you've heard that early days they were isolated to keep their secrets. Um, that might be part of it, but uh, a lot of it was the fire because if you've ever seen inside of their big manufacturing warehouses, the kilns are, there's like six different kilns going, maybe more, and it's intense fire, like intense. So fires are very common. Like I would be so afraid with all these guys moving around with this hot, you know, glass on the end of this poker, rushing it back over to the fire and stuff like somebody's going to get burned. Ah! I would be very, very nervous anyway. Um, so Fenton is not hand blown, by the way. Fenton is made in molds. So it's more of a pressed glass, actually. Uh, so let's take a look at Silvercrest. So this is called Silvercrest because of the clear rim on the white glass. Some of it is painted. Some of it is plain like this. So you can see 903 sold. I'm just going to take a quick peek. Quick peek. How many active? Okay, so you've got 3,400 plus active and 900 sold. So not a terrible sell-through rate, not terrible, not, not a really fast, fast seller unless you sell it, you know, cheap. Um, so we are going to break this down to the white. Okay, we have white, silver crest, all, that's all I've put in. I have several pieces. Um, but here you can see which pieces are the most sought after. There's actually dinner plates. Okay, who really wants to ship six of these babies? Not me. I'm just saying. The Epern, 
cake plate. A Perns and cake plates tend to be the best in most things. There again, four dinner plates. Ay, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry. Uh, that I ship just about anything, and shipping four of those plates would. Ah, oh, that would give me, that would give me nightmares. All right, we've got the, the little fairy lamp. That's interesting that that sells so high. I would not have expected that. Let's see. Da, 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 da. All right, now we're getting down into some bases. Here we go. Here is my little nappy. My little nappy will bring $80. $80 for the little nappy that I paid. You can see that? $3.99. Happy, happy. Happy for the nappy. Okay. Um, another piece that I have here. I know I'm, I'm clanking glass, probably giving you guys some heebie-jeebies. So I've got, let me just, let me just show you the pieces I have and then we'll go continue the search. Um, so we have the ruffled bowl, very plain, paid $2.99. And I have the uh, <laughs> large heavy basket. Now, another little lesson. If you guys are out finding glass, including baskets like this, please do me a favor. Please do not pick it up by the handle. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. There is so much heartbreak from people who have done that. The reason being, this handle, I'll show you, the handle is applied later. So you've got just this little connection here and just this little connection here and the rest of it then would just be supporting the weight of the super heavy piece, right? All your weights right here. So what happens over time is these points weaken and people will be transporting them around by the handle and you get stress cracks right through. Boom, boom. This one does not have any stress cracks. You have to look for that when you're buying these glass pieces. You gotta kinda go through and look at the handle and make sure there's no stress cracks. And this happens, actually it happens for pottery pieces too. So the heavier the piece, the more you have to stay away from wanting to use the handle. Even though it's like, like the logical thing to do, don't do it. Don't do it on these old pieces because they do weaken with age. Oh, Lori found my canisters. Okay, we're going to go back and we're going to look at that. She found my canisters are from Pier 1. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yay. And Martha says, uh, ceramic canisters, white, silver, clear, lid, matte, like $32.95. $32.95. Okay. Yay. Um, you, Terry Ann just bought a piece of Fenton Silver Crest for two bucks. Yeah. You know, I hate to say this. This is kind of sad. But the reason these thrift stores are getting stuff like this is because older people are dying and the stuff is going to Goodwill. Um, this is a 50s, 60s glass. So think about that, you know, people that were a mature collecting adult at that time had these collections and now their family doesn't want to deal with it. They just want to send it to Goodwill and we end up with it. So in a way we're honoring those people who have passed that they loved and treasured this stuff. Like when we find it, and even as resellers, like we love and treasure it during that time that we have it. And then we get it into the hands of somebody who's gonna love and treasure it even more. I see that as honoring those people who had their stuff sent off to Goodwill. Oh, ka-ching. Um, uh, so yeah, you're doing a good thing when you are buying this stuff and reselling it. So I'm going to set this back over Oh, and what did I pay for this? I paid a whopping $7.99 for the basket. Let's go see ah, what it's worth. Oh, before I do that, I also got the compote with lid that I paid uh, $5.99 for. Compote with lid. Oh, um, somebody asked how you recognize Fenton. Now, 
post 1970s, the Fenton started to get marked on the bases with their little impressed trademark. Now, the, the way you can tell what year it was made is it'll have the Fenton name with a number above it. That number will tell you the decade that it was made in. And now I don't, I, I think it goes by um, 9876 and so on. I could be wrong about that. There's some really good charts out there. Like if you just Google Fenton marks, it's going to tell you how to decipher those numbers. Now, before that, a lot of it just had a label. And those labels obviously have come off most of the pieces. So then it's just a matter of, um, well, the crests. So there's several different colors of crest. This happens to be the um, silver crest. There's, uh, oh gosh, there, I, every color you can imagine, crests. But this crest is a distinct Fenton um, pattern. Dots, not the hobnail, but the dots, like the coin dots, Fenton did most of that glass. And then of course there is the hobnail. Fenton was the king of the hobnail that came out in the 1950s. So you just kind of learn your Fenton main patterns and then there's all kinds of varieties within those patterns. I also got, oh, it's behind me, stand by. I'm going to reach and try not to fall out of my chair like I've done in the past. I really have. I've fallen out of this chair. I'm actually sitting in this really old, old, old office chair that is horrible, actually. I have a new one coming from Amazon. <laughs> I can't scoot up and hold this thing at the same time. Okay. Whew. All right. We're back. All right. I also got this piece, which I really don't want to ship unless it's worth a whole lot of money. I don't want to ship this. I don't want to ship this. Um, this may go down to the booth. It just might because it's that obnoxious. But it's these are known as an underplate or a tort plate, and they would have had like another bowl, like a punch bowl or something sitting on top of them. But I wasn't going to leave that piece behind, even though I really, really, really don't want to ship it. I don't want to ship it. You heard me say it. And I promise if I do list it and I do end up shipping it, I will be sure and film it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right. Yeah, their kids, their kids don't want it. That's true. That's true, Terry Ann. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Whoa, Alicia says, I have a vintage rare heavy antique silver plated hand mirror. I Googled it. It's giving a price for $1,800. Could it be possible? Sure it could. You know, and I, and I open this up to anyone. If you are over on Facebook and go to the Niche to Profit Facebook group and you want something reviewed, you want something looked at, researched, whatever, come on over. We will do it over there. Yep. Yep. All right. Okay. I think I'm caught up now. <laughs> All right. Oh, the only other piece that I've got here that I wanted to talk about, and then we'll go back to the results. I spotted this first, and then I, I picked it up, and I actually put it back down because I saw a hole in it. And I'm like, oh, oh, somebody was going to make a lamp out of that or something. Yeah, that's no good. And then I spotted this piece with a hole in it, and Danny put two and two together. Guess what this is? This is one of those trivet I'm trying to line these up and it's just not lining up for me to show you right. It's one of the, the trivet dishes with the handle. It's just missing the handle. And I thought, how hard could it be to find a handle for this and put it back together? So I picked up, it was uh, $2.99 and $5.99. So $9 total those pieces that go did that just guy give you guys like a, a heart attack that clink yeah me too okay <laughs> all right so let's go back over to our results now that you know what pieces we are looking at now this is a little bit different tidbit serving whatever they call those this one's different this has the flat trays this one does not have the flat trays uh, the cake plate you can see does really well 
Dun, dun, dun. That's not it either. Let's go, go, go. Okay, here is, oh, that's just the Epernier candle holder bowl. So somebody just sold that as the, the part. Okay, this appears to be, no, nope, it says that's footed. Does that look footed? Okay, I'm gonna pull this up for those of you asking about identification. Here's what the label would have looked like on a piece that's not marked on the bottom. That is, look, it sold for $12.50 back in the day. That's pretty cool. All right, let me go back. Let's find one of these other pieces. You can see sometimes they're painted or have stuff in them. Uh, low footed round platter. Is it foot? It's not footed. I'm feeling mine. I get this got a little teeny tiny foot on it. That's the right size. Now notice it says $28, but it shows $50 in shipping. I really, really, really work hard to have my shipping close to actual, like, what is it going to cost to ship by using the eBay calculated shipping and putting in the right weight and dimensions. Okay. So it's called a low cake plate, low cake plate. So about, see, I could put this down at the booth for 60 bucks and probably get it and not have to ship it. I probably will do that. So more aperns. All right. I'm looking for the bowls now. Okay. Here's our large bowl again. Oh gosh, you guys, don't do this. Just don't do this. $10 with $61 of shipping. Now, in truth, the shipping on this was probably $18 to $20. So we'll give $40 of that goes back into the thing. So it's about a $50 piece. Wow. $61 of shipping. That's just, don't do that. All right. Let's find our other pieces. You can see prices are all over the board. Here is, now I am not sure this is the same size basket. It doesn't appear to be, and that one is Spanish lace on the side. So sometimes they combine two different patterns into a piece as well. Here's a basket, nine and a quarter. Again, $54 of shipping into that basket. The basket I'm probably gonna take down to the booth as well and put it down there probably for like $50. Probably better. Now, no, you know what? There was another piece on the shelf in this shape, but it was not the silver crest and I left it behind. All right, so I'm still not finding that tidbit tray that is the same, but I swear I did look it up to see that that is what it was. I promise you I did. Where are you? Okay, let's do specific pieces now because you don't want to see me just scrolling through this. I'm going to put in the compote first. And see, and I'm not finding my particular one. And I, like I said, um, maybe mine's not technically a compote. Maybe mine would more be considered, well, apothecary compote. Oh, okay. See, I think that's too cheap. Oh, it's too cheap. Too cheap. Let's put in Kande. Yes, I hate when they do that with shipping too. Yep, yep, yep. You guys are talking about I'm just checking. I'm just checking, making sure I'm not missing a whole bunch of comments I should be seeing. Got to go back and forth here. All right, getting a little bit closer. These have the Spanish lace. That's interesting that this one is plain. And plain is probably not worth as much. So, okay, here's $22.50 with 20. So this may not be worth the hassle factor of me actually listing it and having to ship it. I may just take that one down to the booth. And then if it doesn't sell at the booth, I can always bring it home and list it. There's always that. And then the last one, oh yeah, was the tidbit. Now, the result I found may have already fallen off. Oh, here's the one I found. Nope, I found one that sold for 75. I swear I did. But this one sold for $32.99 plus $29 shipping. 
I saw one that sold for more than that. And let's see how many are listed. So, oh look, somebody's just selling the replacement part. Hey, maybe I could do that. Uh, here's one for 50. Wow, okay, so they've gone down since I looked at them. Or maybe this is the one I saw and I figured like $20 of it was shipping. I think this might be the one I saw and there's like $20 you gotta figure. So yeah, 50, 50 ish, 40, 50 ish. Yeah. Oh, and even if I find the handle for it for shipping purposes, I would take it apart. So if you get one of these or any, you know, glass breakable, like a tidbit thing like this that comes apart, take it apart and ship all the pieces in their own bubble wrap and it compacts and makes the box smaller. So you don't have to charge $50 in shipping. It's the oversized that really gets you. Um, that is a good question. I guess because perhaps its purpose would have been to hold, you know, cotton balls or something. I, I would, I, it's a lidded candy dish to me. It's not an apothecary. To me, an apothecary uh, is a taller, they're, apothecaries are like tall, skinny with a lid kind of jar. That's what I think of as apothecary. Uh, what's your opinion on selling paw prints on my heart collection plates? I'm not sure what you mean. I don't know what your heart collection plates are. And do you mean like painting paw prints? Explain that a little more for me. Yeah, something more medical looking. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Is that all? That was on my Fenton. That was on my Fenton. So, I spotted these two pieces too. Now, at first, I just spotted this little guy. And I held him for a little bit. And I was like, yeah, he's not super exciting. But he's a cute little piece of vintage glass I can take down to the booth. And this is called opalescent, you know, when it does this. Um, and then I spotted the second piece. So $2.99 a piece. So total spend $6 on this little set here. Um, and this is, I believe, Moonstone is what this is called. But if you didn't know it was Moonstone, this is how you would figure that out. So you would go with what you know. So you would go opalescent hobnail. Oops, I'm still in Fenton. Let me get out of Fenton. Opalescent hobnail glass. And we're going to go into solds because we have way too many actives. All right, and let's go to the right color. I'm probably, let's call it clear. All right, there we go. And you can see now, oh, it's Moonstone. Yay! So it is a Fenton. But now we can go. You don't even have to put in Fenton. Moonstone glass vase. And... Apparently it comes in some pretty colors. I've seen these a lot. And you can still use hobnail. You actually want to use hobnail in your title because someone may not know it's moonstone. The collector who's gonna spend the most money is gonna know it's moonstone. The person who's just looking for a pretty hobnail vase is not gonna know it's moonstone necessarily, so you want both terms. Uh, so I figured it's about a $10 piece when I bought it, which, yep, looks like we're right about there, which is what I thought. So if I put both pieces together, now I've got my 20 bucks that I like for my sales to be. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, I wanted to go back now that you guys found those canisters for me. Oh, and now I have to remember what you said. One second. Let me find it. You guys have been talkative. Oh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? The canisters are Pier 1. That's what you said. Okay. Whew. Thought I was... Okay. So, let me go back here. Let's see. Pier... Whoops. Why aren't you typing? 
purses here one canister wow look at that groovy set those are pretty awesome i like those all right i digress Ooh. Woo okay this is called squirreling by the way am i the only one that does that when you're like looking stuff up and you like see like oh i do it all the time oh let's see yeah i'm still not finding those particular ones dun, 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 dun. did you guys oh here's I mean, this is cat and dog themed, but it's kind of that same. I mean, I'm sure that what you're saying is true, that they're pure one. I'm just not finding the exact one. Oh, you guys, I love these. Oh, man. I love those, but they really wouldn't fit with my bird themed kitchen, would they? They are super cool though. I need like, I need like three kitchens to decorate each one differently. <laughs> that or I just need to change my decorating like every other month or something. Yeah, guys, I'm still not finding any of that particular canister on eBay. So yeah. Did you find it on Google? Is that is that where you found it here? Pure one canister with, let's go with that. Anyways, I'm going to get a whole lot of results. Isn't that funny how we find different things? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Da, da, da. On some site that I've never heard of. And I'm not going to click over to because I've never heard of them. Just to be safe. M1, but that's the only place we're seeing. Oh, Pinterest has them. Different colors though, a little bit different. But okay, at least the mystery is solved. I still stand with them being like, you know, $40, $50 a piece canisters. I still stick with that. Yep. You get lost on pretty things. Yeah, I know. That's And that's part of the fun too. I mean, that I'm showing you how I research because this is how I've learned to look for so many things. As I'm looking up something else and I'm searching by highest first, I have to go through and see things that are similar, but that probably sell for like way more money. And so now my eye is kind of tuned in to look for those things. I've seen them before. Like the Ray Dunn stuff, who, who here is not going to be looking for Ray Dunn birdhouses? Like, come on. Now that we saw those prices, it it sparks something in your brain so that you're more aware as you're out there and can find this stuff and and retain like not the exact pricing, but no. Oh, that sells for over eight hundred dollars. If I can pick it up, you know, for a hundred, even two hundred, I'm going to make a killing. Right. Yeah. Hello, Tammy. Good to have you here. So she finally found me live. Yep, I'm still hanging on. We've got just a little bit left, but I'm still here. And okay, I got two more like fun things. Um, let's see if I can not fall on my butt. All right, I just, this is the goofiest, craziest, funniest thing ever. And I had to buy him because like, where are you going to get another one? Now I get it. He's missing some leather from his little forelock. I might maybe like they added some yarn on here too. So maybe I will get this color yarn and actually maybe finish his little head. I could do that. It would, I need two strands. I need two strands of either, or maybe I'll just trim. Ooh, I could trim a couple pieces off of this and have the same material and fix him up. Yes, I can do that. I never looked at them that close, but now I see I can do that because it's just these are each one would hold one strand. It strings through. Um, he is. He's like a ceramic kind of thing. I mean, look at, he's got little little beaded, butt, and it, this is real horse hair. He has real 
horse hair for his tail and I will rebraid and fix that up. I just love him with his little googly eyes and his funny little self. And he was uh, $3.99 and there was no way he wasn't coming home with me. And uh, he'll probably go down to the booth. He'll probably go down. I know he's so cute. I just, yeah. Um, and I found him like on the way out. Like when I, I always go through the, the shelves and then I give a once over, go right back through in case I missed something. I love the little beads on his butt too. Um, you get over there. Don't fall. So I knew he was coming home with me. I, I didn't even really care what he cost. I knew he was coming home with me. Um, and then the last thing that I picked up off of, off of the cart, by the way, um, this is still a battle. Yeah. I mean, I did, um, I did a video a while back when, um, when we first opened back up after lockdown, uh, it was like one of the first, it was the first Goodwill I had gone back into. And I don't know about for you guys, but the Goodwills were crazy packed with people. Like there was lines to get into the Goodwills when it opened back up, which is like, blows my mind. Um, makes me want to open a thrift store. I will tell you that much. And I probably will. Stay tuned. Um, but I'm in this Goodwill and it's super crowded, but I'm like so excited to be back out and shopping again. And I'm getting stuff and I'm putting it in the cart. Now, mind you, this is the same Goodwill that I had previously gone to. And the employee was actually helping me shop off the cart. She was encouraging me to shop off the cart because it's less work for them. They don't have to then go put it all away. So I approached the cart to go grab this item on the cart and the employee comes over and literally smacks my hand out of the way. And not just a tap. I mean, she smacked my hand and I like, I stood there for a minute, like with this range of emotion from stunned, humiliated. Um, and then I became really sad that she was so afraid that she felt the impulse to do that. I mean, it was, it was really bizarre. I ended up abandoning my cart because on top of that happening, the line wove all the way around the store and it was just way, way too much for me. So I went out to my car and cried. Um, but I'm still getting a lot of comments on that. And, you know, you should have turned her in and it was assault. And um, my daughter who did end up calling the store and reporting it to the manager who was going to review the tape and then have a talk with the employee. My stance is one of, um, I just knew her response was not something she really thought out and did because she's a vicious person. I genuinely believe she did it out of fear. And I just, you know, I just have compassion for that. And I love to show grace to people as I would hope that they would show to me. So that's why I haven't gone all, you know, crazy. And I didn't go like crazy, you know, strike back, kick her butt, all this, like I'm getting comments, like telling me to do that. I'm like, no. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> so now I'm really cautious about the carts. Okay. I've learned my lesson, but in this particular Goodwill, uh, the guy was rolling this out and I see this and I say, can I have that? <laughs> he goes, yes, of course. Uh, and I'm still not quite exactly sure what I've got here. But I do know it was $4.99 and it is extremely vintage and rusty and I'm afraid to even like torque and tweak any of this because it's going to break um, because it's got wings and things and I don't know if you can see the little guy down here pumping the little he's like, you know, cranking the, the little the little thing here. 
Um, I think this is like 70s. It's actually got some switches on it too, I just noticed. Ah, this is so steampunk. And it says, what does it say on the bottom there? Okay, I'm trying not to break it. This is definitely going down to the antique booth. I don't even know what that says on the bottom. What does that say? It, it looks like it says ink, like incorporated, but in twine, in, where did I see it? It's on here. So, oh, here. There's, what does that say? Salinger? Salin? Can you guys see what I'm seeing? I know it's S A L I N G E Salinger. I want to say it's Salinger, right? Right? Ah. Okay. I'm going to set this down carefully so as not to break off any pieces. At the booth, I'm actually going to hang that like up from my little rafter thing. So I have to look and see if I can find anything like this because. It's pretty, and it was $4.99. So I'm hoping, let me just put in Salinger. Nothing. Okay, this is where we pare it down. I'm gonna go into art first. And yep, nothing, nothing. So maybe I need to do Salinger metal. Give me all cat. Oh, you did give me. Uh, there's nothing, you guys. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Which again? Oh, what? Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Oh, <gasps> no way. What did I find? Check that out. Check that out. Oh. Wow. Okay. So it would have had a motor, runs on a nine volt battery. Really? Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. All right. And this one was as is too, needing repairs. Okay. I now know what I have. I have a Bruce Salinger. So I'm going to put Bruce Salinger in here. I'm about ready to pee my pants. <laughs> like, what? See, you got to listen to your gut. My gut is what told me that is more than just a piece of junk. I think my gut knew what I had. And the fact that there are two solds and none listed also tells me what I have. So let's go over to our friend Google real quick. Bruce Salinger. Um, let's put in sculpture. So Live Auctioneers has one, Pinterest, Pinterest, Antiques Navigator, Live Auctioneers, Cherish had one. Oh, Cherish is definitely one like, oh, let's go over to our friends at Worth Point. That's a good place to go. Let's look up. I want to look up all Bruce Salinger. Did I spell it? I spell it wrong. I spell it S E L. Okay. Holy moly, guys. Um, 500. I'd be happy with 500. 500. 400. 1500. All right. I'm super stoked now. <laughs> oh my goodness. I know, I know, I don't know. See, here's the thing. I'm using a software called StreamYard to live stream this and their screen sharing still doesn't give like the full screen share. So I'm going to be looking at n different softwares n to kind of do this so you guys can see that better. Yeah. Yeah, but you can also go and do these actual searches yourself so that you can get the results yourself and kind of peruse through them and pull up any of the listings. So just look at the words I put in, put those words in and sort by highest first and you should get the same results or close to it. Yep, yep, yep. 
You want to see the piece again? Okay. Yep. I am really excited about this. And honestly, I think I will send this down to the antique mall booth. The reason being is they can see the condition. They can see what needs to be fixed. Um, I'm ooh, carefully unbending some of these. They can uh, just, you know, know what they're buying in person. I guess the batteries would go under here. Yeah, so a battery, battery would go in here. Oh man, this is so cool. I just, so apparently when you put the battery in and you flip the switch, this little guy actually turns. Oh, it does, it turns. It's got moving parts. Oh, there's two guys. There's another guy flipping upside down here. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. And there's another guy that's like driving the thing and another guy in the, oh man, this is incredible. I'm so excited. That is so cool. I had no idea. I had no idea. No idea. I love it. Okay. We're going to end on a high with that, I guess. You know, oh, that is amazing. <laughs> but that's also why I have the space at the antique mall for those things that I really, 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 number one, don't want to ship. But number two, stuff like that where somebody really needs to see it in person. And I will sell it cheaper than what it would sell for on eBay. So that potentially if somebody wants to make some money on it, they can come buy it from me there. And I just have so much less hassle. But I, I'd be happy to turn $5 into $500. Like, who wouldn't? That's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, that's why we do this, huh? It is why we play this game gotta tell you. All right, guys, it is time to get back to work. I am so behind on listing. I gotta tell you, uh, I, I don't know what it is about taking a little vacation that just gets you completely out of your routine, right? Like I am, I have to get pictures taken. I've got to get pictures taken. That's where I'm stuck. I got drafts. I got drafts for days. I just need to get the pictures taken and get stuff up. Again, I have said this before, I'll say it for you guys. If I ever show anything on here that you are interested in, if you get to me before I list it, we could possibly negotiate. I'm not saying for sure, you know, um, but I'm much more easily uh, negotiated with after, I mean, before I list it and owe eBay the fee. So we just keep that in mind and just reach out to me probably um, Facebook's the easiest way to reach out to me. I am Danny Ackerman on Facebook. Uh, you can also find me through the page, the Danny app. And I have links down in the description if you ever forget that stuff. And uh, join the Facebook group and come hang out with me during the week. And with that, hey everybody, have a fantastic first week of August. Go get those sales and go be profitable and make it fun. And we'll see you next week. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for being here.